The UFL Gambling Podcast Week 2 Preview and Picks and DFS episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 different states. Head to cut.com. That's K-U-T-T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by underdog fantasy play their fantasy picking for a chance to win a hundred times the amount of money you could enter, whether it's college hoops, NBA, MLB, NHL, and much, much more sign up today. Using the promo code TCE SGPN to get a hundred percent deposit match. And remember as always folks to let it ride. Hey folks, this is Bud Foster. You're listening to SGPN. Let's let it ride. Is this or is it not the UFL? Yes, it is. Do I or do I not currently have a pulse? Yes, I do. Let's play football. Welcome to the UFL Gambling Podcast Week 2 Preview and Picks episode, as well as DFS. Uh, hopefully you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash at UFL gambling pod. Get on over there. Hit that like, hit that subscribe because this league's kicking ass. That's also our Twitter handle too at UFL gambling pod. But I thought it was a great first week of the UFL. We cashed in shout out to drunken Irishman. He says week one was awesome. Bakes. I'm in, I'm in for the UFL, but Colby, I guess you were seat in the hall. Uh, <clears throat> I you. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, folks, I'm excited for week two. You know, I love football. All right. I love football the, through and through. And so are these guys here, um, if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, yes, we are the UFL gambling podcast. And my name is Colby swing and dad to base dad, AKA pick Don D that's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. Uh, I think tide turning, I see, as I remember, I was raised in the desert, but tides kind of turn. It's easy to see a tide turn. <laughs> Did I say those words? Yes. Yes. Did I say those words? I mean... I said the words that, you know, I'll be honest. I was a little bit of a skeptic of, you know, bringing together these two leagues. I love football, love spring ball. I have loved it since the OG USFL to the World League, to uh, NFL Europe, to whatever. CFL, subscribe to the CFL Gambling Podcast. And I didn't like the merger. But after watching week one, I was was pretty, pretty satisfied with the product. Uh, I am joined by my co-host. He is the host of the Bottom Line Bombs podcast. Uh, much better than bottom uh, bottomless mimosas, in my opinion. Uh, give it up for the, well, they call him the man in the box. He's also known as the bet detective, CJ Sullivan. How are you, buddy? Good. What's up? The extended C block continues with the Bottom Line Bombs. Then the bombs down under, which I see a lot of listeners are coming over from. And now the UFL show. This is triple. Uh, to answer some of those questions that people are turning down the bombs on the replay to catch us live. I love it because it is footballs. There's all jokes thrown in there and the NIT championship game. I'm on the hall. Kobe's yeah. on the Indiana state. That's fine. J Mark. Um, who are you taking? You taking Indiana <laughs> state. You're an they, Iowa guy. Jay Mark's taking Caitlin Clark. No matter what, no matter what <laughs> yeah. it is, he's taking Caitlin Clark. That's all he knows. Truth. Truth. <laughs> um, uh, we are joined by third man in the booth, host of the old fashioned football podcast, which I believe is going live mm-hmm. in a little bit here. So you can make it the, you know, four straight shows folks. Um, I, I, it's like, yes, like, so it's like, that's that. like a, that's like a Saturday morning in uh 1999 where you get uh four straight episodes of cheers. You know what I mean? Yeah, you get the wings back to back. Yeah, on USA oh, that's Network. just fantastic. Uh, you can't go wrong with Ted Danson, right? Mm. Um, I, you know he did he did blackface himself, so maybe you can go wrong with Ted Danson. But you know what I mean. Uh, give it up for the host of the Old Fashioned Football Podcast, Justin Mark, aka J Mark. How are you, brother? 
Doing good, doing good. Yeah, make sure you check out Old Fashioned Football. We got a big autograph thing giveaway this month. Um, Colby, I got to ask, what's your favorite part about the UFL mm. so far? Is it A, the kickoff, or the fact that the USFL teams have so far dominated the XFL teams? I got to be honest. I think it's the kickoff still. <laughs> just because, just because, like, it's a big deal to me, man. I think it's my favorite. One of my, it's, it's one of my favorite plays in football. And I was pissed at the NFL for, 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 for moving, you know, years ago when they moved it up to, to have, I thought it was a lame thing that you could still punt return. And, oh, yeah, yeah, studies say, studies say my ass. They still haven't showed us anything, right? Um, so, uh, I, I, I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. So then uh, they go to this cock XFL one and you know, kudos to the originality. I appreciate originality, but I just didn't think it was a solid product. And, yeah. uh, and I was glad to see, I thought this week we didn't have any returns for touchdowns, but we had just some big time plays. I mean, uh, that's 64 yard field goal was kind of set up by a big time return there. Um, how, how about you, CJ? What was the thing that stood out to you most about week one? Did you think it was better than last year's XFL or USFL? Or you just think we're all just, uh, you know, full of shit over here. Um, I do know we have some, a uh, t-shirt saying for the merch to st store for sure. And that is studies my ass. I like that. Uh, as all jokes says, no studies never work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Get Perfect. Your goddamn <laughs> studies. Get your studies out of here. Um, I think uh, I, I, I also like the games. I thought they were fine. Uh, they ran the ball a little more. Of course, we know the XFL did not run the ball as well. Uh, they're not successfully. It was, I don't know. A lot of the offenses were a bit weird. The unders did hit as we did like uh, a lot of 40 pass attempts for like 150 yards. Just, just uh, bizarre games. But I, I, overall, I was, I was fine with the product. You know, we got to move forward. And um, yeah, like we, like we summed up in the recap show, you have, uh, you have Birmingham and you have everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, did you think it was better than the, the XFL solo product or the USFL solo product? Just the yeah, merger? Uh, XFL took a little while to get its feet going. I don't, I'm not here to throw slander at the XFL. No, you know? I'm uh, saying the UFL is the right. UFL better than the XFL. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't, I don't think we need to, I don't need, we, we don't need to insult the XFL to praise the UFL is what I'm trying to say. It's not insulting. If you like both and just say one's better. I enjoyed I enjoyed games at Vegas played with a scissor lift skirt, you know, and uh, and the bleachers getting blown across with a storm oh, and trust me. terrible just construction trust me. sites. What, what was the name of that stadium again? That was at AAA ballpark they yeah. had out there. Yeah, look, yeah. that stadium was better. It's better than the fucking Battle Dome or whatever they're calling that shit in St. Louis. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's one thing. I didn't like games at Ford Field, but let's not get to the negative. I, I like the product. Obviously, it was a better start to the XFL start, but uh, some good players for sure. Yeah, J. Mark, what do you think of Week One? Yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, we expected there were going to be some teams that started a little slow. The defenses are always ahead of the offense. You always hear that, especially on the line, and you saw that there was some terrible blocking, especially run blocking, despite the fact that they were running the ball more. Uh, but overall, I mean, I thought it was a, a successful Week One for them either way. Um, I thought, you know you and I both kind of shared the view that the XFL was good, but it almost seemed too showy. Seemed like they were trying to make it a little showy. I feel like that took a little bit of a step back in week one of the UFL. Agreed. Uh, also just to hit on the news with Spitgate, He got yeah. cut. Come <laughs> what on. the fuck is going on? God. You spit you're out of here. Can I, I mean, I will, we... I will. And this is if you're going to spit on a player, it has to be on a white guy because it's a completely different meaning when you spit on a white guy. I mean, well, Romanowski got a pass with that. Romanowski would do that shit all the time in the 90s. Uh, you're but, better off stabbing someone than yeah. spitting on them. That's the way they, they get treated as fit. It's amazing. Yeah. You're, you're, bringing up, he's cut. Yeah, you're bringing up years of history when you Gone. spit on someone. Pizza um, gate, spit gate, just don't cause controversy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's why true. that's why that's why that kid knocked out seven white kids in that pool video because he was a, there was a spit he got a little wet, a little spit Ch take. That, uh, wait, that ECU graduate, or I'm that sorry, ECU no, he's graduate. currently an ECU uh student. 
So <laughs> yeah. uh, CJ don't bury the fucking, you know, the, the, the sure, best yeah. thing about that thing. Um, yeah. Somehow. I don't know if ECU is coming out of the headline of that story. Are you you're pulling and, and, and championing them. And I love it. Championing the ECU pride. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's what stole me. I mean, look, but when they first broke that story, it said ECU grad or no, it didn't say graduate ECU student knocks out seven seven guys and we can uh, o- and we can only assume NC state pussy Packers. That's what I'm saying. That's I I've spent a lot of time. <laughs> I bet the tech was on the case right. after what, after two viewings on the, uh, or maybe yep. it was three viewings on the uh, college basketball show. Strong, strong chance. It was uh pussy pack fans. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, look, let's dive into these games, but before we dive into these games, I uh, want to tell you, you're listening to the UFL gambling podcast on the sports gambling podcast network. Yes. SGPN is home to 20 plus gambling podcasts. All of them are completely free. This week's featured show is the MLB gambling podcast. And as you guys, you all know, I'm sweating out right now. Well, I don't know that I'm sweating, but the pirates are up seven to two. I do have the Pittsburgh pirates take down the Washington nationals. Um, so I'm all over this, but I'm just a schmuck making picks. The MLB crew knows what they're doing and they got free daily picks podcast every single day. Get on over there. If you aren't subscribed to the MLB gambling podcast, get subscribed. What are you waiting for? Play ball. All right. <laughs> you like my play ball. Right. I like to play yeah. ball and I forgot. I almost, almost forgot. Cause there was so much, um, uh, well, how, how great we did with our week one picks. I still haven't got a game wrong guys. As far as ATS, right. you yeah. know, so just, uh, I don't know that I should make any picks this year and just tout mm-hmm. that I was undefeated. Um, also I, I did get some news that what, uh, I think what this is there a starting linebacker? I thought I saw a starting linebacker out for the battle Hawks. I thought, uh, is it Mike Rose, Mike Rose, I believe the starting linebacker for the battle Hawks. Uh, Gonna be out. I've, as far as I saw. That's also, okay. yeah. And Jacor Pearson is 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 uh is is pro- is rumored to be back in a few weeks. I heard too. So that might be a good thing. Look at you with your player update news. Uh, you Steph, know I'm out there. Well, trying to, pl- trying player trying update to step on news. Mark's territory here. Player update <laughs> news is just reading random people on Twitter. So that, that no credibility here. Zero credibility well, here. Like I said, yeah. these you. I mean, in his UFL player updates, they come fast and furious. You know, a sheet in your hand is already old by the time it. You know, by the time the ink is dry, <laughs> players got baby mama problems. They got work problems. They got work release problems. You know, the the, the roster is overturned quickly. <laughs> on a week to week basis. Yeah, they really do. Um, but let's go. Uh, into it. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's go game one. Uh, once again, can I, uh, I mean, I'm going to talk, so, you know, it's me guys, you know, I like to talk a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like two games on Saturday, two games on Sunday, Sunday kind of works, but Saturday is a thing called the it's a thing called the final four happening. Um, why not spread these out? Do like a Thursday night, a Friday night, a Saturday uh-huh. night, a Sunday night. Like Call me I crazy. said, Call men me crazy. Because men don't know how to schedule. The women's hoops, <laughs> they know how to stay out of people's way. They know what they do. And the women, the ladies know a good they know a good itinerary. They know a good plan, you know. They like, they like the things laid out, you know? See they the be- all the vets. Well, the beauty of having the XFL and USFL last year, mm-hmm. you had a bunch more games. So it would be like on Thursday you right. have an XFL. So it, uh, I feel still, even though we have this league, spring football, which I always want. I feel like I I'm, I'm itching for more of it. There's no yeah. Thursday night, no Monday night, no Friday night action. I want action. When's the CFL starting starting soon. Subscribe to the CFL gambling podcast, which I'll also be hosting with J Mark here. Mm-hmm. Um, and Maybe I, I spread them out and, and uh, we're expecting bet detective to be a guest appearance on that fucking show. All right. So get your you Montreal are. alouette knowledge down, buddy. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, game one is the, San Antonio Brown is heading to my personally, my favorite stadium in the whole entire fucking league. If you haven't been down, if you have not been to the Liberty bowl, you haven't lived a, eh? what I love is it is a classic fucking stadium with personality. You could spot the Liberty bowl away from a fucking, from any stadium in the world. You'd know mm. which one the Liberty bowl is. And what I love too, is there's edge. You could get your ass kicked going to the game just Memphis. outside, just outside. I love Memphis. Stay at the Peabody. 
Or you can get right. some of the best barbecue you ever got there. That's, that's right. That's right. Uh, right there on Beale Street. Go to yep. BB King. Get a little cocktail. Um, might get your ass whooped. Um, it's it's just <laughs> everything that's great about life. You know, you don't want to be predictable. Just think you're no. going to go to a go to a, a showboats edge. game without the possibility of getting your ass whooped. Um, I, I kind of wish they played on an actual showboat, like a river, you know, a river. I've been gambling. saying this. You so know, put this on the river, a gambling. And if you lose, you get tossed off karma chameleon style. You know, like, talk, like, get talk to play, get them out of there. You are speaking my language. We've been saying this. So last year, I know you guys weren't on the USFL show with us, but right. me and uh, Patty C and NC Nick, you know, we love regionality. Part of the reason why we love college football so much. And when the new Orleans breakers and Memphis showboats are playing, we love the possibility of that being a rivalry a hundred years from now. And yeah, you know, we wanted them to actually take a showboat to new Orleans when they had to go to the breakers. I mean, wouldn't yes. that be great if you took the travel by teams? showboat. Yes. Like the old fight. If you know anything about blues music, you know, they, they all did that shit. BB King and miles Davis and shit. were taking it all up the Mississippi river. There yeah, was gambling going room. on. There was yeah, drinks. Yeah. There was women. Yeah. It was just everything that's great. Yeah, women with those fully, dre- fully dresses where they kick their legs. They put it over your head as a gag, and they put it back <laughs> up there. You know, and you're you're trying to play poker. What the and, hell are you and doing? If you're there, cheating Rose? in cards, if you're yeah, cheating you're in ch- cards, you throw them in the fucking Mississippi. All right, All right you yes. throw them in the Mississippi. Yeah, you, you jack um, an ace off her garter belt, you know, and you put that up your sleeve, and then you toss off the boat. <laughs> I love it. There's a there's a whole sad generation of people younger than me that don't know what you're talking about when you say BB King and Miles Davis and it hurts my heart. <laughs> <laughs> they at least know boy George, right? The, 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 the gambler of all gamblers. <laughs> well, well, I don't get <laughs> they bring uh, the yeah. cold, but they're counting yeah. down seven. So the Brahmas are coming in with their little hot shot, rinky yeah. dinky, you know, cha, cha, cha offense. <laughs> you got your AJ Smith. You got Anthony McFarland. We only he's like a he's like a vintage Cadillac. We only we only, we only use him when we have to, you know. Yeah. And uh, it ain't gonna fly when you go down there to the Liberty Bowl, all right? Because I think Memphis's defense is legit. And one thing I know about Carnell Lake, he studied under Dick LeBeau, mm-hmm. one of the greatest defense coordinators. And he, LeBeau played the game too as a safety. Um, and I think his defense is going to give them some issues. Uh, the running, the running the ball for the showboats, bit of a question mark for me. But I think the showboats have a better roster. The fact they're at home, get out of that filthy dome, get down to Memphis. That's always a battle too. Texas barbecue against Memphis, uh, against you know Memphis barbecue. All right. Um, but, uh, either way, the team that's going to get barbecued, it's going to be them Brahma's showboats are going to get it done. I like the plus two. I actually take it on the money line. Don't even take the plus two. Um, and the total, I do lean over here. Uh, Mm. CJ, what are you doing here at the Liberty bowl? Yeah. Well, the San Antonio Brahmas, uh, it's a classic letdown spot for them. They had a huge, huge opener win, upset win. They're supposed to be dead last in, in the in the entire league. They look good for a half, you know, and they held on for the win. Um, I hope Wade Phillips is in all yellow again. I did like that. I enjoyed Grandpa Wade in, uh, <laughs> putting the yellow on yellow outfit. It looked amazing. Uh, Memphis did not look good, even though they got the win on the road. They um, never trailed. Tried. Never they, never, they never trailed. They did get the victory, obviously, against a bad team. But um, my man Vinny Papali Jr. from Delaware tapping the tapping the toe over the big mind over the puzzle. <laughs> uh, home opener down there in rough the Liberty Bell. Uh, I do like I do like this as a uh, letdown spot for San Antonio, and maybe Memphis kind of plays a little better, gets it right. Someone's got to get their first loss. I think it'll be San Antonio. I like Memphis plus the two. Of course, the, might as well take them the money line and get the outright. This is where Chase Garber is going to, I'm telling you, he's going to, uh, Cardinal Lake's going to have that defense disguised, little surprise blitzes here and there. He's not going to know what's going on. All right. He's going to be wishing he was at BB Kings, you know, sucking down cocktails. Uh, J Mark, what are you doing here? Yeah, this was the hardest game of the week for me to uh, mm-hmm. pick a side on, to be honest. Uh, I could see it going either way. I honestly think if you like the under, you're on the boats. If you like the over, you're on the Brahmos. We saw AJ Smith's offense have success in the first three to four weeks. Then people started being able to slow him down. 
I think that carries over. I think they're going to get three to four weeks of this offense of flying high, moving fast before they get slowed down. I mean, I know Greg Williams shut them down in that second half, but I still like them to be able to move the ball on the showboats. And I'm concerned with the showboats offensive line. Mm. Case Cook just didn't look great. Darius Victor couldn't get a t- 10 carries for three yards. He couldn't get anything going. I'm going to go with the Brahmas. I think they're going to keep that fast pace going. They're going to keep them moving backwards uh, all game. And I think their defense was all right, too. I, I was impressed. It wasn't as good as the showboats defense, but I think it was good enough that I think the Brahmas are going to sneak out a win here. I think it's going to be close, but I think they win by at least three. So I'm taking the Brahmas. And this is on Fox again, or is this one ESPN? I believe the first two games will be Fox again, second two oh. are ESPN. Nice. Yeah. So th- th- there's a bit of a gap, though. It goes, so this is what kills me here. It goes from 9 a.m. out here, Pacific. So noon Eastern, San Antonio, Memphis. And then it jumps to uh, 5 o'clock Pacific. So 8 o'clock Eastern. Uh, for our, I guess they didn't want to go up against the Final Four. So I guess I'll make, but I still get a little bit of the Final Four there. Right. Um, of uh, course, they're not. They're going understand. right into. The, yeah. They're going right well, into the final four yeah. because that's St. Louis. They need something to do at night. They want the dome. They want them. And they. <laughs> I mean, let's. Dear God. Uh, but they don't care. They. I mean, obviously, uh, they don't care about the the uh, final four. But um, it'll look good. It'll be. It'll be packed out. Arlington's is- getting five against St. Louis. Um, what the over unders at four? I, I I see forty one and a half. J Mark, I think you were going to say something. Didn't mean to step on your or your words there. What's up, buddy? No, you're good. I was just going to say I was wrong. The first game is on ESPN. The second game is actually on ABC. Ooh, they're going right ah. after them. And mm. then on Sunday, it's ESPN and Fox. Yep. Interesting. And then it goes right to the Versus channel from here on in. See channel 53 <laughs> on in after that. Uh, I mean, this, uh, I, I, I'm taking the points here, man. I got St. Louis might win this game, but five points a little too much for me. I think Arlington's a better roster than St. Louis. I just mentioned they since St. Louis got a little bit of the injury bug. Also, Tony Meatball against Bob Stoops. I'll take Bob Stoops every fucking time. Uh 41 and a half as the total. I do I do think there'll be some scoring in this game. So how about this? I'm on the over two straight games. Give me that over on 41 and a half. Wow. I think that money line is live though. I mean, I know this crowd will be crazy. They'll say it's a sellout, even though the top deck will be completely empty. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, Arlington, uh, I just think Arlington is, 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 this is the style of ball that they're, they can flourish with. I know they didn't look great against Birmingham, but Birmingham's like a, a fucking NFL team. All right. So, um, I think they can stay. I think they are live to win this game. And the mm-hmm. coaching strategy, I think I favor Arlington. So not only give me the five, give me the over and sprinkle a little bit on that money line as well. I kind of like a little showboat renegade parlay CJ. What are you doing here in this game? Um, as much as I would like to agree with you, especially with the coaching, because I know, you know how I feel about Tony meatball coaching the, the St. Louis battle Hawks and the, but, uh, I'm I'm gonna go with J Marks, but uh, guys here. I think it's I think it's a coming out party. It's a bounce back at night. This place is gonna be lit. They did this last year. This was their home opener last year for Arlington. They beat them what twenty seven to eleven. There was or no there was no Luis Perez though. There was no Luis Perez. A god, I, am, a god amongst men. Oh, but AJ but AJ <laughs> McCarron's kids are there to watch him play. They're gonna be up late. The mom, the moms have to keep them up late. These kids on St. Louis, but luckily there's nothing to do at St. Louis afterwards game. So we'll go right to bed after this. After well, I, actually st- I think St. I think St. Louis <laughs> jumps his team. I, I love that. It's anything under seven. I'm taking, I think they win this by double digits. What are you doing on the total? I think they're going to have a chance to hit it. Um, by themselves, that over right? by themselves. Absolutely. So 41 and a half. I'm not, I'm not afraid to play that. I, 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 if there's a team total, I'd like to go for that. I think, I think McCarron and St. Louis has a big night. Now here's the thing. I was I was going down a rabbit hole on murder rates uh, with cities. St. Yep. Louis, by the way. Sure. I guess I didn't realize. I'd be, I've been drunk in St. Louis, you know, a decent amount of times. I did not know. But I've been you drunk guys were murdering yeah. to this level. Well, have you been drunk in East St. Louis? Yeah. It makes it fun to go yeah. to St. Louis. <laughs> you know what I mean? You never know what you're gonna get. All these safe cities is boring. It's mundane. Go to Barnes and Nobles, have a coffee. All that bullshit. I like getting out there. AJ McCarron's, you know, family you're gonna risk it. They're gonna go there, um, but they're gonna lose. Uh, J Mark, what are you doing here? 
So I agree with your coaching angle. I, I think that Stoops much better than Tony Meatball, but McCarron much better than Luis Perez. Um, <laughs> I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. Perez, you put pressure on him. He's very mid. He's a very mid quarterback. AJ McCarron didn't look, he looked all right last week. It was their run game that really let them down. Their defense let them down. But I agree with CJ here. This is a coming home party where everybody's excited. The dome is filled with all that noise. Luis Perez doesn't know what to do with them. And yeah. Alex are going to roll here. They're going to roll. Well, you know, you mentioned all this stuff. Giving Luis Perez a hard time because he went up against an NFL team. Um, uh, how about the fact that, to me, um, he uh, threw the ball downfield a lot. Now, I know he had a pick. He had a higher complete, a higher complete, a better completion percentage than uh, your boy AJ McCarron's, and also seven point six yards of completion. He was taking shots. All right, AJ McCarron's little check down god. All right, we'll see if he can do it in the Battle Dome or whatever the hell they're calling that filthy arena. Um, you lean the over though? Is that what you said too? Over? Yeah, I like the over yeah. as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I uh, I think we saw all the unders hit last week. Starting off with two overs to get it to get it done there. Uh, let's switch over to Sunday. But before we go to Sunday, I want to tell you folks out there that the, the uh, UFL Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in forty different states. P two P social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, mm-hmm. pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. Plus, they got a ton of fun social features that give it a feel of a uh, betting social network, so to speak. And Cut offers a lower VIG and fully customizable odds. You can even create your own bets, people. And Cut handles the payment side of things, so you never have to chase old, old Ricky down in the streets, you know, for that money he owes you. Um, no, don't worry about that. Download the Cut app today in the App Store. Head over to Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T dot com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by underdog fantasy, the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Pick whether your favorite player will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. You can win up to a hundred times the amount of money you enter in a single night, pick between two and five players to build a pick them entry. The more players you add, the higher the odds go uh, sign up today with the promo code TCE SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as the instant pickup special. Once again, visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with the promo code TCE SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pickup special. All right. We are and back. Just What's to up? interrupt you real quick, Underdog Fantasy has a UFL section. Nothing there yet, but they're gearing up to have UFL uh, props over there. So that'll yes. be exciting because the books don't have that. So you can go get it on Underdog Fantasy. Love it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Remember this team? Um, and by the way, we should talk about that for a second. But remember, this was a uh, – see, I, I was an, I've always been an XFL guy. I got this. I got this thing wow. live from the games down there at uh, Home Depot Center, whatever they're calling that health club. Um, <laughs> but uh, Dignity Health, some shit like that. But um, you see, they, they've they been listening to me for years. They got the rights to the Canton Bulldogs, which I was saying when they were playing in Canton, I was saying the USFL, oh, you got to, how is there, how, you know, that was one of the original NFL teams, the Canton Bulldogs. Back in the day, mm. they just purchased the title the other day for the Canton Bulldogs, also a Nashville team. I forget the name for the Nashville team, but Canton Bulldogs. Come on, UFL. Stop holding out. The Nashville Tuners, the worst fucking name in the league. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds pretty. Uh, that that? Sounds pretty uh, I, I mean, I'm not a big one of the worst. We'll see. It's we'll terrible. <laughs> well, they own so many of them now because they have the Washington Federals, they have the the Jacksonville Bulls, they have the Chicago F- Blitz, um, they have all those old uh, Oakland Invaders. They need to come back. But I thought Canton Bulldogs. There's a sign that there's actually there's a reason to be optimistic about life because you know I'm normally negative, but this was this was a, a, a substantial uh, move in my opinion. CJ, I know you're excited about the Canton Bulldogs chances. I like the tuners. To be honest with you, tune like, like tutsers, You know, Nashville gets you in that airport mood of the of 
the tootsies right there. I, the I mean, it makes more sense. Than the fucking yeah. hawks. Right. Absolutely. Louis, <laughs> yeah. Battle hawks. Not a goddamn battle hawk. It's not even a battle hawk in St. Louis. Name. Yeah. But in Nashville, um, they, they tune yeah. the guitar. I get it. They play 100%. tunes. 100%. Yeah. Um, all right. Sunday. Sunday, we got uh, we got some 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 more fire UFL action. Uh, Nine a.m. Pacific, Birmingham. The Stallions heading to that filthy Ford Stadium. Six people will be. You think you think after their first win, mm. we're gonna bring in a bigger crowd this this week, CJ? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, not on the, <laughs> certainly not on a Sunday morning. Nine a.m. Um, Detroit's popping though no, right now. Actually, Detroit in April. You got all the teams popping like uh, Tim and. Uh, Tim and Sam said, you got Pistons winding it down. Tigers Great looking season. coming in, Great coming in season. hot. Yeah. Red Wings looking all right. Red Wings are uh, looking all right. Yeah. yeah. Now you got the Panthers. There um, you go. 9 a.m. Six and a half is what the Michigan Panthers are getting. The over unders at 41 and a half plus 225 for the Panthers on the money line. <sighs> Nope. Can't do it. Give me Birmingham. <laughs> Look, I want to so bad. I want to like, so badly. Do I want to take the six and a half? Because I think they the defense could keep them hanging around a little bit. And if, if they can just learn to not throw the ball, <laughs> they might be able to make a bunch of 60 yard field goals and stay in this game. Who am I kidding though? Give me, give me the stallions. A little worried about the back door though. Uh, CJ, what are you doing here? I don't know what you're afraid of. What are you talking? Well, I mean, this is it. E- EJ Perry scared you off a little bit. I understand, but um, you know, you know what happened when they uh, they switched up when he when he rushed the ball. I'll give me the Panthers. Give me six and a half and the points with these Panthers. Uh, they got the they got the the natural field goal kicker Roy Hobbs who went missing for twenty years now he's drawn sixty four you know, yard you first attempt. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's easy to see a tide turn. This is at home. <laughs> it's at home. Give me give, give me give me Detroit to stay in Michigan whatever the fuck yeah. to stay in this game because that defense is stingy enough and also the under. It's going to hit here. I like the under a lot. Actually, um, I already took the six and a half. It's down to six. Um, the money lines aren't out yet, but I'll be sprinkling Michigan money line. I know Birmingham is the best team by far, but uh, this is a game, you know, I mean, not that they're going to look ahead on week two, but it's back to back game. It took a little while to get going. Mich- Listen, you don't blow out Michigan. That just doesn't yeah. happen. You know, yeah. they can lose anyone. Their offense is gr- terrible, but that defense is for real. And they're going to be popping and they're going to be, and they're going to be excited again. I think they're going to ride this early momentum. 20 to 16 final. I like it. 20 to give, 16 final. Give me the points and give me the under. What are we afraid of here? Let's go. J Mark. What are you doing here? You guys are crazy. Uh, I agree. Panthers. Great defense. They looked very impressive last week, but the Stallions are a really good defense too. And I think they're going to be able to shut EJ Perry and West Hills down. They're going to be able to slow them enough that they're going to make EJ Perry pass the ball. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you say the only way you're going to beat us is if this guy who looks his receivers down and mm-hmm. is, did not throw very accurately in week one can beat us in the air. So I'm all over the Stallions on this one. I The under is my favorite play in this game. But I think the Stallions cover. I think they win by ten plus. Mm. You, I, did you just simply pull up last year's game and say they won twenty seven thirteen? I did not. Okay, <laughs> um, because I think this Michigan team, with the additions they did, they got especially at the wideout spot. Even though I know they're still shitty on offense, I do think they are a little bit better offensively from a roster standpoint than a year ago. They lost just so you know, folks, they played once last year, Birmingham won 27, 13 on, on back on May 20th at Ford field. Um, I'm not going to pull a Colby and change a horse midstream here. So I'm <laughs> <going to back>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did change horses midstream because CJ you was did. spitting truth. All right. <laughs> and I realized that I was like, you know what? I feel like everyone's going to take Birmingham minus six and a half. They're he just saw me. the, he just saw They're the light, Jay me. Mark. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Absolutely. <laughs> Woo! Um, you're on. The, all three of us are on the under, though, right? Yes, that, we all love the under. We got a Michigan. We got one uh, Birmingham. We got one could go either way. 
<laughs> well, uh, just kidding. Two on Michigan plus six and a half. Let's go. Let's go. You, CJ, are you, are you thinking about sprinkling that money line? If they if they give if they offer it to me, I don't see one out yet. But yeah, of course, I got I'm, it. Plus two twenty five, buddy. Oh, DK, give it to me. absolutely, yeah. give me that money line. Why not? I won't. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of this big <laughs> bad Birmingham beast like everyone is, especially early in the season. Stallions will win the game. Michigan will. Stallions get the, will win the game. The I'll say that if they didn't get the yeah. and you know and um. What's we call Carol did look good. Corral, whatever you how you want to pronounce that fucking name. But they don't get that touchdown right before half. That's a completely different result last week. Matt Corral. Corral. Yeah. Yeah. Corral. Yeah. Okay, Corral. Corral. Okay, Corral. Whatever. Golden Corral. E- ECU graduates sort of the golden, the golden Corral. Carol. Yeah. Come on. Um, golden, the golden Carol. <laughs> Line up. When's the last we, time you've been in a golden corral, CJ? <laughs> um, it had to, yeah, I, I can't I imagine it was a 3 PM meal. If it was a golden corral, you know, maybe bring it out, bring it when I was volunteering, I think for the elderly, you know, how the bring, fuck would, are would, they now would, 24 hours? i will go by the home, bring a grandmother over to the golden crowd. There's some good golden crowd fight videos out there. I've seen those before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, golden corral, uh, I've been in the past, in, in the past 10 years, I was, uh, in, I think I want to say it was in Kansas and I went mm-hmm. to a golden corral. Um, J Mark, you got golden corrals there in Iowa. Yeah, we do. I, I haven't been to one since my grandma was alive though. Speaking <laughs> of the elderly, so. It's been a while. Well, let me tell you, buddy, get yourself out there. You got options. All right. Grandma, grandparents love the golden corral. Yeah. The golden corral was like last year and we had the USFL XFL and CFL all going. It was like, you know what? We get to pick and choose what we want. Um, yeah, not- you want it. Yeah. Country fried steak or country fried chicken or chicken fried chicken, chicken fried steak. I mean, you get all the options. All CFL all day, but uh, it's fine. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Representing. Nice. See, we get to we got shout out to Channing Brown. He's Canadian too. CFL fan. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Um, all right. The afternoon game. The Houston Roughnecks are heading to the Lemon Party in Washington D.C. at Aldi Field. Mm. Beer snakes already going. I've talked to my people. This is this is this is a great spot for DC. This is a smash play. Yeah, my mind. get this Houston bullshit out of here. <laughs> I'm all over. I'm all over these defenders. All right, lay the five. The forty-one total is is. I thought this was the hardest total because I thought I I expect a, I'm going to call for a defensive score in this game by Greg G- G- Williams. Right? Yeah. But. I kind of lean over because I think Houston can get some garbage fucking points, but I don't know. I feel like this is like a, uh, 31, 13 style game. Something like that. Mm. Give me DC to get it done. What are you doing here? Bet detective. Uh, I love DC. This game to come back after the loss on the road. DC. I mean, I said DC and I, which I, we were all on and I did predict a slow start for DC. They did move the ball. They got it down and had four field goals. That was the problem. I mean, they drove down there. I mean, I know what J Mark says is the problem, um, but <laughs> <laughs> and but their defense. And we saw this all last year. Greg Williams, they'll give up big plays though. So that's that's why I don't mind playing that over at all. Um, Forty, but I think I think uh, I think I think DC is going to be angry. I think they're going to get right. I love Reggie Barlow. I trust him more than anything uh, to get this team right, to get this even one on one. And Houston, I think we're, uh, we all agree was the worst. Looked like the worst team in the league last year, last week, um, of of the four efforts. Not, not to say oh, they're the worst team. Who knows? But they had the worst effort of uh, of all the teams there. So I think it's going to be uh, another rough patch for Houston coming up. I love I love these. I love these seeing this spot. Yeah, and. Um... You're right that like San Antonio only had 17 more yards than, yeah. uh, and I should let you know that, uh, thank God we do have some outdoor football. It's going to be a high of 58 that day might be a little yes. chilly for them. Houston boys. Those lemons will get frozen, whipping them up at that Houston guy, you know, beer snake will get locked in frozen. I love it. And, uh, I should also let you uh, no Saturday. Saturday, it's going to be 70 in uh, Memphis, by the way. But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> I like to, uh, I like to dive into the weather. You know, yeah, the elements. Get some UFL weather report. Give us the elements. Yeah, we got high winds coming in here. Look at you. Um, you, gave us, you gave us an injury report earlier, a two man injury report. You never know what we're... you're going to get with me. 
And now we're going to two city weather report. Other cities, well, go fuck yourselves. Well, wait, the other one's in bullshit. Right. It's in the that bullshit in dome. All You're right. right. Yeah. Some saying. Uh, J Mark, what are you doing here in the nation's capital? Yeah, I'm all over the defenders. Uh, has the UFO given an official ruling on if they're going to regulate the terms of the mm. beer snake? Because the right. XFL, you know, the first week it was hog wild, then it was banned, and then yeah. it could only be in one section. So you had to pass your cup. So I'm stupid. curious what the UFL is going to do for that. Stupid, stupid. See, we have God too many laws. Sakes. I know. That's what I'm I mean, saying. What, what's treated like of your treat it like a street in Memphis or a street in St. Louis? <laughs> Let the shit fly. I'm saying, what's the point of your league if you're going to be regulating beer snakes? I mean, sure, yeah. aren't you aren't supposed you trying to, be the to get fans? Fun, right, yeah. anything, right. the fun, whatever. Have you seen Ford Field lately? <laughs> All right, not have you driven a Ford lately? Have you All seen right. Ford Field lately? All right, because it's fucking empty. It's empty. You want fans to show up there? Let them have a little fun. Let me look. I mean, it's not going to turn into a Dodger Giant game. You're not going to stab somebody with a little. Beer snake. What, what's what's mm. the worst that happens? You get drunk, you run on the field, and someone tackles you. It's no no big deal. Anyway, J Mark. Yeah, uh, I'm all over yeah. the defenders here coming home in front of that big crowd. Uh, I don't think Houston has it yet. Their offensive line is terrible. Uh, this is this is the best lockworthy game, in my opinion. Uh, but on the other hand, you guys both took the over. I'm taking the under on this one. I think Houston struggles. I do think defenders score some points here, but I still like the under on this one. Yeah. I mm. agree. Mm. I can see that too. I think Houston. I mean, Houston's the only thing I'm worried about, obviously, with the over. Uh, there we go. Shout out to Thomas mm. saying Defenders fans can't be contained. Yeah. Lemon parties. Don't hey, hey for, if you're going to the game, refs throw a bad they, you know, they're bad call on a play. You feel it's bad, even if it's good, you throw those fucking lemons. Mate, let's have some fun here. Let's have some goddamn fun. All right. Um, what's our favorite play on the board? Let's do a lock and a dog here. All right. I um, I think we all we're all pretty confident on DC. I don't want to if, if we wanted to break it up. I'd I'd rank it. My two my two favorites are DC and St. Louis. Uh, DC number one, St. Louis two, and my dog will be um, give me Memphis as a little pup. It went out right. Mm, a little plus one ten. <laughs> this mm. guy over here, this bet detective bastard. I mean, I'm, I'm on. Uh, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on. Hey, I'm on that plus two twenty uh, Michigan as well. But you know, two twenty five. Yeah, two twenty five. Um, we can only stay with one, so I'll stay with uh, the one that might actually come in. Yeah, I mean, I think the lock <laughs> is DC. I don't think yeah. Houston can be able to move the ball, right. but the dog is the Arlington Renegades. Better coached, better quarterback, better team. Yeah, you're in that filthy battle dome. All right. <laughs> But um, I think I just think Tony Meatball, some in-game strategy, He'll probably go for a fourth down or two, or kick a field goal when he shouldn't, something like that. Bob yeah. Stoops steals it, and you know he won the XFL championship for a reason. They wanted him to win it, uh, at, so plus one eighty. Let's go, J Mark. Yeah, so my locks DC. A minus five. I think that's the the best spot there. The, the dog. I just realized I did not take any underdogs. So um, <laughs> got to do a parlay now. Do it. Yeah, do, I'll do give up my parlay. Yeah. My parlay was Battle Hawks minus four. Uh, the under in the Stallions Panthers game under forty one. DC Defenders money line, so they don't have to cover. And then I'm on the on the Brahmas. You can take the boats if you like the boats instead. Either way, whichever spread you take, it's plus eight eight eight. So eight <laughs> eight to one. <laughs> Wow. So, Whatever floats your showboat. So <laughs> much chalk in the air. Um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, just square city over here. Um, uh, let's get to DFS. But before we get to DFS, which by the way, CJ Sullivan, the bet detective did, did if you tailed his picks, which clearly you didn't be, mm -hmm. did anyone, because no one tied you, right? CJ. No one tied me. No outright. That's, six not, that's like when I gave away my fucking one that hit for a couple grand. Yeah. No one played it. Glad to see the listeners are listening. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, I mean, we'll if, get if you are listening, right. Dundee's running the table with the picks, the entire side. I'm give, throwing out top five DFS lineups. <laughs> exactly. What else, do you, what else do you fucking need? Um, and I'm telling you, this lineup is going to be fire. I'm feeling good about this one. Feeling good about it. Might, might, might throw in some serious coin on this one. Uh, -oh. uh, I thought I had an ad read. We don't. So let's just go right into it. Um, 
<laughs> Who's your quarterback, guys? Because I think J Mark's gonna be a little angry at old Dundee's play. Because I'm going with the YouTube guy. We're on YouTube. He's on YouTube. All right. We learned everything on YouTube. He learned everything on YouTube. And he's gonna learn how to beat the Battle Hawks after he watches this fucking episode before the game. All right. <laughs> Luis Perez, 8,800. Cha ching. Who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? <laughs> Get that goldfish. <laughs> Jerry Maguire. Um, I think I, I, I can almost guarantee that me and J Mark have the exact quarterback opposite of you in that game. I'm going AJ McCarron. He's the most expensive quarterback out there. But like I said, I love them this week at night in the dome. His home road splits are huge uh, because the kids get to see a uh, nice game. Like I said, this, this exact scenario played out last year at a home opener and they lit him up 27 11. And I think it'll be even more. Give me uh give me AJ McCarron Saturday night at the dome in the battle ax dome 10, mm. five. Mm. It's worth it. But like I said, DFS, no, don't DFS for UFL. No worries. Spending money. You'll find value anywhere you want to find it. Uh, do you went with McCarran's too? I went with hey, McCarran's. I didn't surprisingly. Whoa! Um, <laughs> I know that is sir, shocking to me. I know Memphis is a good defense, but I think this AJ Smith offense has three to four week limit and then it's done. <sighs> And so I think Garbers is going to be able to move the ball again. I think he's going to be able to score a couple touchdowns again. So I took Chase Garbers at 10K. Whew. Hey, Jesus. How are you how are you going to miss out on this AJ party? You're spending the 10K anyway. You're going to go to the goddamn Memphis Showboat game? I almost, I almost took the Golden Corral, but the Panthers defense does scare me a little bit. <laughs> you should watch out for that Memphis defense, buddy. Um, running backs. Um my highest, I have three running backs. I don't know what you guys did. Did you guys do three? I have no. two, I believe. Okay. Um, my top guy is a guy that they barely like to get the ball to Anthony McFarland. Uh, I, I hope they learned now uh, we're counting on Wade Phillips to learn. <laughs> now he still produced. He still produced last week. He was in my lineup that what that hit sixth yeah. place last week. Yeah, Anthony McFarland, Marilyn Grad, just like my mother. We got it. We got to jump in on that. Eighty five hundred, Pittsburgh Steeler. Yeah, I love it. You, 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 you. Did you uh, roster him against CJ? I did not. I didn't want to double up too much of last week. Although there's a couple guys that still have the same value. Your Deion Keynes, McFarland, all of them. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I didn't want. I want to mix it up. So. So you got, when they zig, you got to zag, you know, although except for this guy, he's, this is the only double up I did do. And I, f I have a feeling he's going to be just a lock, lock it in, brighten in every week for me. He's my Abram Smith this year. And that's CJ marble, $8,900. Uh, he had 18 carries last week. He, they, as long as they trusted him, that's all I wanted to see. They did. Uh, I trusted him and believe in him. He's going to get, he's going to get the bulk of the carries. They're going to be up a lot of games. He's going to be running it out. And, uh, yeah, he's lock until he's hurt. He's going to be in my lineup every week. All right, CJ Marable, the former Chanticleer, J Mark. Uh, what are you doing here with your top running back? Yeah, I also went with with, with McFarland. If I could talk, he was the uh, the third best mm -hmm. running back, even though they didn't use him that much. So I think they see they look at the game tape and they go, hey, "We need to get this the ball in this guy's hands more." Whether it's on the ground or in the air. So I went with McFarland as well. Good round. You're celebrating with your appetite. Bad round. You're losing. <laughs> you're using your appetite to forget about the round. I'll tell you something about appetite. It's a real fucking great thing to have. And he has it. Just give him the fucking rock. Bobby Knight, rest in peace. Um, yeah, my second uh, running back. I took a shot on. Uh, this might be a stupid play. You know, I don't like Tony Meatball. All right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wayne Goldman. Um, mm. do, what, what did he do last week again? I thought he was I a little mean, expensive, but I just had the money. I he had was the expensive. Money. They gave him the rock. He didn't do much. I mean, he had, you know, he averaged three a pop, 13 for 40 he had. But that, see, the problem is Michigan's defense is stout, though, man. Yeah, I agree. So, so. I know Arlington can play a little defense, but at home, I thought, you know, I am on the over in this game. Maybe he just punches in a little one or two yard touchdown here or there. But uh, yeah, that's, that was so great. That your, that's your first flex spot. 
Yeah, but, but I both those running backs that I gave away are flex. Nothing wrong with nothing yeah. wrong with running the wishbone. That's what got me there last week. Let's go. Let's go. It never fails. Um yeah. who's your who's your second back, CJ? Uh second back, if I'm going down to I gotta find him. He's down to flexes now because uh you only have to start one running back down as DFS, right? It's one running back and uh, two receivers and yeah. two flexes. That's what they do. Uh, my second running back, I'll pivot down. There was, uh, I know um, J Mark believes he'll be shut down against the number one team in the league, but I want Wes Hills. I The Wildwood, New Jersey kid, 8,400. He had 11, last, obviously, last week. He had a big game, 11 for 85, but he looked electric. Averaging over seven yards a touch, and um, I like this Michigan. I like this Michigan team in the morning. I think it's going to be grind. They know they can't throw the ball, obviously, and then you can stack the box all you want, but uh, eventually he's going to he's going to pop one. So I like I like this Michigan game. I like this Michigan team. I like West Hills, Wildwood, New Jersey. I do like that angle. I might I might turn in a second one with my whole roster, but switch out. <laughs> Man, I'm just converting people. I'm just converting Dundee left and right. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, with, all, with all my Michigan sales. Only on well, Michigan. <laughs> only on Michigan. Because look, yeah, here's right. my thing. I'm still turning in this lineup with Gallman. Of course. But you know he's getting carries. Gallman, yes. I don't even know. You right. know what I mean? They pass the ball too much. So it's like you know you're gonna get the carries. So it is logical. It is logical. Hundred percent. I'm looking for volume, non stop. And, and when I'm looking at DFS for UFL, you just want to look at who's going to get the ball because you don't know. Yeah, J. Mark. Uh, what do you? Who was your second back? No second back. I consulted Woo-hoo. with June Jones. We're going <laughs> spread offense. Yes, um, I love it. So since you guys jumped to flex, I'll give my first flex out, and uh, that was my stack with Chase Garbers. I got Jonte Kirkland. Um, mm. He's the best wide receiver on their team, one of the best in the league, in my opinion. So 100%. I like Kirkland, especially in that offense. He he fits that offense so well. Yeah, I agree. I like Kirkland. Uh, nice play. I mean, we'll see. I'm, I, I'm, that's actually the game I think I want to watch most. It's the toughest game, as J. Mark said. Uh, uh, toughest toughest one to pick, for sure, and it's the lowest spread for a reason. Um, but I, I like that. If you're going to do Chase, you might as well do Kirkland. You might as well hook him up. Uh, my third and final running back is I jumped on that Puka Williams train, man. Looked good <laughs> last week. They would they, yeah, they give him the fucking ball more. Uh, so fifty nine hundred bargain shopping over there. Load up that lawnmower. Load it up. Watch Let's your toes. Go. Watch <laughs> your toes, everybody. When that lawnmower is coming through. Fifty nine hundred at the bargain price. Uh, CJ. That is, a bar- that is a bargain price for sure. Absolutely. CJ, what are you doing uh, in your flex spot then? Uh, well, all right, let's. Well, we will let's see. My, here. my got... pirates are about to shit the bed here. You got the Nats, got two on. Seven <laughs> four game. Good God! I wonder he's oh, going in such a weird order. Sign right. me a cliff. <laughs> baseball done. D- baseball yeah. done. D. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll follow the um, J Mark. Uh, path here. I do my hookup, a little inexpensive hookup since I have AJ McCarron. And I, I touted him last week, even though he wasn't in my lineup. Marcel Aitman is the cheapest of the St. Louis receivers. All the St. Louis receivers, you can't go wrong. They're all talented. They're all great. Marcel Aitman, though, they really have underpriced, I thought. He's at, yeah. uh, what I have him at? 6,600 or 6.5. Yeah, I got him. 6,500 uh, last week, but his numbers, he went six for 60 and, um, and a touchdown. And I think I, I have him too. And I think he had even a few more targets too. So he had seven, he had seven yeah. targets along yeah. with 25. Um, but yeah, six for six touchdown. I mean, and like I said, it's going to be, it's going to be a St. Louis party that night. And um, I had the money to go Darius Shepard, but I didn't. No, I said you flex him. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I, you know? I could have bought myself a Darius Shepard if I wanted. Could have got him. <laughs> could have got that Cadillac. All right. Um, yeah, I like that play. I th- I think he's a great value. I think he's a great value. Even if you don't have McCarron in your lineups, you need to get some of the St. Louis passing offense in there. And I uh, until they price Aitman better. I mean, he's he's one of the he's he's someone AJ relies and trusts upon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, J Mark, give me one another one of those thirty wide receivers you have. Yeah, might as well uh, play the music again because I also have Marcel Ada yeah, Man. Yeah, Ada Man. Man. Get on over there, roster him up. Let's go. Uh, all right. Well, uh, I only have one player left, so I feel like you should just do another round of uh, giving out your plays, CJ. Uh, next, uh, your next wideout. All right. Well, uh, well, I'll stay cheap. 
and it's a little, I mean, it's a little chasing numbers, but so, uh, until his prices uh, comes up a little bit, I, I don't care. I'm still going to take him. Ty Scott, number one receiver last week for DC, four f- catches for 87 yards, Woo. and he had six targets. Yeah. And you can get him at $5,100. Like I said, it's going to be a big game there in DC. They moved the ball just fine. They just didn't punch it in. You know, I have no problem with the with Jordan Tamo quarterbacking down there. And I think it's going to be a route. So yeah, give me Ty Scott at 5,100. Um, my fa- my favorite value on the board. Yeah. Uh, bro average just says, is this just for YouTube or can anyone see this? Anyone can listen to this. <laughs> yeah. Anyone can listen to this. Uh, Spotify. Uh, I think he's talking about the iTunes. comments. Oh, okay. <laughs> can anyone see the comment he's saying? He's, um, no, it's right. Yeah. It's just on we YouTube, you. right? That's not on Twitter. No, no, that's not no. on Twitter, but we see it. We see it. You're not. Uh, yeah. And we copy yeah. and paste it and we email it out to our list yeah. and uh, any of your personal. So, so, so drop your email, drop your email in mm-hmm. there. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I like that play. I like that play. Um, J Mark, what are you doing with another one of your crazy wide outs? Yeah, I love that play too, because I have him. He led the league in receiving last week. I agreed. It's kind of chasing numbers. And you, you can see you guys flip flop a little bit in spring football. They have a good week. They have a bad week. But yes. Tamu and Scott look like they were connecting well. He t- tended to look his way more often than not. So, yeah, I love that play. Mm-hmm. Let's fucking and it's go. Cheap. Yeah. And it's cheap. It's so cheap. Yeah. And then, like you said, UFL does flip flop a lot. But, you know, until he proves you wrong, then we'll get off it. So, how many guys do you guys have left? I have one. I got one. One in the defense. Yep. Okay. Yes. Uh, so my final guy on the offensive side of the ball is Jay Sternberger. You know, I, I, he's just, mm. he's reliable. He got a bunch of targets. He's just, I think that, and you gotta remember they lost, they didn't have Jamar Smith. They didn't have him go. So he's building that chemistry with Corral and Adrian Martinez. So I think it's only going to enhance as the season goes along for 6,300. Give me a Sternberger. He's a legend in the spring leagues. CJ, what are you doing here with your final spot? Final spot. I want to get a little piece of that Memphis showboat going on. I didn't go Vinny Papali yet uh, because I think the second I touch him is when he'll uh, (laughs) falter. Even though (laughs) one catch, three yards. Exactly. He did have seven targets. I will say that he had four for thirty six and that one touchdown. The toe tapper. That's what helped the stat line a lot. But um, his other his partner in crime, David Davis. You can get him at uh, sixty six hundred. He had. He had yeah. ten. He had ten targets last week. Seven catches for forty-three yards. As we know, Cook is, wasn't really stretching the field, although the volume was there. He threw the ball forty times. So, uh, yeah, give me David Davis with ten targets, seven for forty-three. Hopefully, you stretch it out and get in the end zone. You can have a nice big day there. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I like that. He, he's he's been good, and he's he was on the Tampa Bay Bandits. I feel like yeah. a couple of years ago. Uh, J Mark, uh, who's your final offensive guy? Yeah, uh, six targets, three catches, 66 yards, and a touchdown. Picking up where he left off last year, Deion Kane. Yes. Uh, he just he seems to be the guy for that offense. I thought, sure. I thought with Marlon Williams back from injury that he was going to kind of take from that. He didn't. This seems to be Deion Kane's uh, wide receiver room. Yeah, there we go. I like that. I thought about rostering Kane. Uh, Marlon Williams he was, did. He still yeah. didn't look. He didn't look 100% healthy to me. He didn't. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kane, yeah, Kane was in my lineup last yeah. week. He had three touchdowns championship game. Like I said, he's just, he's riding that over coming in and he's very cheaply priced though. Yeah. Now did we all roster the same defense? Because uh, I alluded to this. I think there'll be a defensive touchdown in this game. I have the defenders at 4,200. I'm assuming you guys are a couple of sharps just like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? That just uh, jumped on that. But uh, what'd you do with the defense there? Bat detective. I went with the absolute cheapest defense out there who might be the best defense out there. And that's those Michigan Panthers at $3,000. I don't care who they're fucking playing. They're getting yeah. them at home. They make absolute plays out there. They were lit and flying around the field. I saw everything I needed to see out of that defense. Last I do week. love their defense. I yeah. do love so, their defense. You yeah. know, may they lose the game? Sure. But they're not going to get blown out by them. You know, and they're going to make plays and they're going to get turnovers and they're going to get sacks. They're going to do what they do. So at 3,000, I believe they are the cheapest by far. You can get a much worse defense than that for that. Bargain shopping, uh, J Mark. Uh, who was your uh defense final play? Yeah, never have I ever uh flip flopped on a defense so much. Um, I was moving defenses in and out of my lineup. It was between for me the Brahmas because I, I'm concerned Memphis with Cook yeah. is not that good. 
Uh, but I did go with the defenders because I think Houston's offensive line is terrible. And I think they're going to be able, able to pressure Guantanamo Bay into making some mistakes. Love that. Guantan- pick six for Guantanamo Bay is loading, loading right now, folks. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's our show. So get on over there. Subscribe to the UFL Gambling Podcast. The game that I'm most excited to see is that. Memphis game there at the Liberty Bowl. How about you guys? You got a game that, that that you circled as the one you want to watch most? Well, that's early, so you'll have no you won't have to wait long. Saturday nine in the morning. Um, I'm going to have uh, the final four on one TV, and I'm going to have that St. Louis Battle Hawk night explosion on a on a smaller TV without any sounds. So ah, you're a, excited for that one. Fan bases, yeah, I am. I want to see that game. I think it's going to look good. I think it's going to great good. I think it's going to be a lot of points. Jay like Martin, spring football nut. I want to see them all, but. Um, be with the parents this weekend celebrating my dad's birthday, Miranda's birthday, and mine. Oh, yes. shit. happy birthday! Shout happy out. birthday! Thank happy you. birthday! Shout, right. out, shout out to the marks, right? Yeah, um, yeah, right. I really want to see that Stallions Panthers game because the Panthers defense looks so impressive. And I think I said it on our recap show, we're gonna really know if they are a good team after we see what they do against the Stallions 100%. Uh, yeah, I'm fast. I mean, like all of them, all all these games are great, you know. So get on over there, check out the UFL Gambling Podcast. Uh, give J Mark a follow on Twitter at J Mark Football. Uh, give CJ Sullivan, the Bet Detective, a follow on Twitter at CJ Sullivan underscore. Oh, also, remember to check out the Old Fashioned Football Podcast coming up next, and check out the Bottom Line Bob's. I just dropped an episode. And uh, I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. The College. Uh, I also host the College Football Experience college basketball experience. We just dropped a couple episodes over the past 24 hours. Go check out both of those. Um, subscribe to that CFL gambling podcast. It's really coming this year. Also, uh, if you, if youtube.com slash at XFL gamble, I'm sorry, <laughs> youtube.com uh, slash at UFL gambling pod, get on over there. Not XFL at UFL gambling pod uh, and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button on the video. Also on Twitter at UFL gambling pod as well. So uh, let's go. Let's, let's get it going until next time, folks. This is the UFL gambling podcast. Have a wonderful fucking weekend Uh, until next time. Have a good one. Yeah.